Welcome to a new episode of Cheaters Always Cheat. Like, subscribe, and share to stay connected. Background. My ex-wife cheated on me with a co-worker and friend while we all worked together. Although she moved to a new job in 2016, the affair continued on and off. The day I discovered the affair was in September 2018. I had to work with the co-worker for a month after the discovery before finding a new job in the same industry. The co-worker, a fair partner, was fired from the old company, but later rehired, and he currently holds a management position there. Recently, my ex-wife attempted to end the affair and has been released for the time being. She is now staying with her parents, who are located 10 hours away. As a result of the situation, I have full custody of both kids. I still harbor a lot of anger towards the affair partner because of his terrible behavior. Boasting about what he did, and even using me to cover for him at work. Yesterday, I received a call at the office before heading out to the field, and I heard some news. My manager, who is aware of some of my story, called me in and informed me that my current company has just acquired my old company. The old company was involved in a specialized role in our field of work, and my current company is looking to expand into that area. He grinned and asked me who I think they should keep on board. He emphasized the importance of having strong moral character. The current owner of the old company, who went through something similar with his ex, has agreed to keep things confidential until my company makes decisions. He might have even suggested this approach. While he doesn't like the affair partner, AP, he values his experience. My boss offered me the chance to deliver the termination notice to the AP under two conditions. I must do it in the presence of himself and another manager. They are both the same size as me. 6 and 220 pounds, not much fat these days, and they are aware of my anger issues as I've been open about my struggles. I attended anger management classes with another co-worker, and they made it clear that I shouldn't engage with the AP. However, if the AP becomes hostile, my boss will step in to handle the situation and protect the employee, as he believes it would involve less legal trouble if he defends someone. Personally, I think my boss understands my anger and doesn't want me to act on it, especially because I've never felt such intense hatred towards someone before, like I do for this guy. I'm no longer bothered by the fact that he slept with my wife. My biggest issue is his constant mocking of me, and the fact that he continues to pursue other affairs, even though he knows the harm it causes to marriages and lives. The other condition is that since the original owner is moving south, and the supervisor is getting fired, I have to assist the company during the transition until a new supervisor manager is hired. I have the most knowledge about both companies, and if everything goes well, they promised me a raise and the chance to do this full time. Wow, is that karma? I've missed you. I'm not sure if I'll take up the offer to deliver his termination notice, but whether it's petty or not, it feels like a satisfying dose of karma. I was all smiles today. On Friday at 7 a.m., if I decide to go ahead with it, I'll walk into the meeting at the old company and hand him his termination letter in front of all my former co-workers who are aware of what happened. The reason for his dismissal will be that his moral character doesn't meet company standards, especially given the honesty and integrity required in our work, particularly when dealing with certifications for measurement devices that handle millions of dollars worth of products regularly. Both my old boss and new boss have experienced similar situations to mine, and they've heard some of the stories about the AP boasting to me about his actions with my wife in his office, which is now in a new building, as the old office was sold. He would also use me to cover his work while they were involved in their affair, and he had numerous other moments of being a complete jerk. They believe in the importance of karma and want to help me find some closure on this matter. However, the reality is that my new boss knew we couldn't work together peacefully due to the hostility. I'm still working on managing my anger, and he's quite upset that I did something terrible, like telling his wife and everyone else about the kind of person he is. He seems to think that I owed him not to say anything, though I'm still trying to understand why he believes that. Do I feel bad about this? Not too much. The truth is he padded his hours, stole equipment, the police will check to ensure all property is returned did his work carelessly and drinks at work regularly. He recently tried to start another affair with the new safety consultant, but I may have informed her husband about his true character after an old colleague mentioned it. He was left in charge mostly because the owner was stepping back and retiring, and no one else knew the systems as well as he did. 
I was the next closest. But at that time, I had no desire to stay on, as the memories of certain movies were still too vivid in my head when I was in the office at the old building. I imagine his wife will be angry since, in my opinion, she was more concerned about the standard of living than anything else. They were both forgiven just two days after she found out. You may call me petty, but I must admit, I feel pretty good right now. Update. I need to vent a bit here. The situation just keeps getting more twisted. In short, my good friend, who is the AP, sent me a message. I opened it without realizing who it was from, and he informed me that just two weeks after our wedding, my ex decided to do a special dress showing for him, wearing her wedding dress. When I confronted her about it, all she did was cry and apologize, saying she could never apologize enough. Honestly, that made me feel sick. I can't comprehend why she would marry me while cheating on me. Why go through all the effort, spending tens of thousands of dollars, to stand before friends, family, and God and lie? There was no respect, no honor, and no truth in anything. It's right up there with cheating on the wedding day as one of the worst betrayals. Anyway, that was about a week ago. Yesterday, I went to our old storage unit. She was supposed to get her stuff out a month ago. When I opened the door, what did I see? Her wedding dress. Apparently she wanted to sell it. Normally, I'm all for selling old stuff we won't use again. But I couldn't let someone else get married in that symbol of betrayal. So, I took it home, and then invited my ex over to celebrate. She showed up 30 minutes later and saw her wedding dress in the fire pit. I gave her the chance to set it on fire herself. Surprisingly, she took the match and lit it up, considering the safety concerns. Wedding gowns burn quickly. She cried for a while after that, and she spent the night in my bed while I slept on the couch. We had a long talk that night. She couldn't believe the things she had done, and neither could I. Seeing her burn the dress felt good in a way. At first, she was angry that I did this, but I think it might give her some closure she needs. As for me, I'm still very disgusted by the whole thing. I know there's no future for us, but I feel somewhat relieved. Second story. My wife, 29F, and I, 31M, welcomed our baby last December. But the birth was traumatic, and my wife developed postpartum depression. Originally, she planned to return to work after giving birth, but due to her struggles, we decided to wait until our daughter turned one before reassessing the situation. To help with her depression, she's been attending weekly therapy sessions. Since she's now home full-time, I've had to work longer hours, which we had discussed and agreed upon, before making this decision. Recently, my boss approached me about a project that would require a lot of overtime in a short period. This opportunity would be financially beneficial and also great for my career. I discussed it with my wife, and she agreed that I should take on the project. During the four weeks of intense work, my mother-in-law and her best friend Jesse, 29F, would come to assist with some of the tasks I usually handle. Jessie is a stay-at-home mom with a four-year-old and a two-year-old. She started coming over during the day to help my wife watch the kids. After three weeks into the project, it was evident that we needed a few more weeks to complete it. I discussed this with my wife, and she said she was okay with it, but she became distant in the following days. This behavior wasn't uncommon in recent months, so I didn't dwell on it or take it personally. In the last week of the project, I arrived home one night and noticed that Jesse was still at our house. I didn't think much of it, greeted her and my wife, and then went to check on our daughter. As I was heading to her room, I overheard Jesse say something like, he doesn't even stop to greet you, definitely a sign. I turned around and asked Jesse what she meant by the sign. Right away my wife started crying, and Jesse accused me of having an affair. She claimed that I must hate my wife because of her postpartum depression and that I'm not attracted to her anymore due to her pregnancy weight gain. None of these accusations are true. I love my wife, and I'm doing my best to support her through her PPD and take care of our family. I find her beautiful just the way she is, and I haven't pressured her for closeness. Then Jessie insisted on seeing my phone, but I refused. She said that refusing is a sign of guilt. I told my wife that if she wanted to see my phone she could, and she nodded. This hurt me deeply because I felt that my wife actually believed I was having an affair, and didn't trust me after everything we've been through together. After looking through the phone, she found no evidence, but Jessie insisted that I must have deleted it. She started screaming and woke up our daughter, 
so I asked her to leave the house. Eventually, she left, and I went to comfort our daughter, while my wife remained on the couch, crying. Once our daughter was asleep again, I sat down beside my wife and tried to discuss what had been going on. She told me that she had been worried ever since I started working overtime. I reminded her that we had discussed the opportunity and she agreed to let me take on the project. She found it suspicious that the project's duration was extended but I explained that sometimes such extensions happen. She wanted more evidence, so I showed her messages and emails from work with timestamps and pay stubs indicating the overtime hours. She said she believed me and apologized for doubting me, but Jesse had been convincing her that these signs indicated I was cheating. I questioned why she trusted Jesse more and why she didn't discuss her concerns with me. She couldn't give a clear answer. It's been a couple of weeks, and the project is now over. I've actually reduced my workload to spend more time with my wife and daughter. However, I feel exhausted from trying to handle everything and becoming resentful because deep down, I know my wife doesn't trust me. I worry about the future, wondering if every time I have a project, run errands or go on a business trip, I'll be faced with accusations of cheating. I've tried bringing up the issue, but my wife deflects, saying it's not the right time because she's tired or sad. I want to respect her feelings, but I can't help but wonder if it means I can never express my own concerns. Update. A lot of you pointed out something that should have been obvious. I need to get a therapist and take care of my own mental health. Some of you asked for an update, so here it is, but it's not a happy one. That night, I talked to my wife and told her I was going to find a therapist. I didn't mention her accusations, I just said I was going through a tough time and needed therapy. She didn't seem to care much and just told me to do whatever. The next day, when I returned home from work, our room and my home office were in chaos. Things were scattered everywhere, and important papers were all over the place. My wife wasn't around, but our daughter was crying in her room. My wife had left her alone, and her cell phone was off. I tried calling my in-laws and a few friends, but no one had seen her. I started to worry, and reached out to my mom to see if she could babysit, while I went out to look for her. Before my mom could get home, my wife returned, and Jesse was driving. Jesse didn't come inside since she hadn't been back in the house, after I kicked her out due to her being offended by my behavior. However, my wife came in looking visibly upset, and had been crying. I asked her what happened, and my initial thought was that maybe the house had been robbed. But then she started screaming at me, accusing me of being unfaithful and claiming that therapy was just a cover for me to meet my mistress. I tried to calm her down and assure her that it wasn't true, but she came at me and ended up hitting me, resulting in a broken nose. After she realized what she did, she sat down on the couch and became completely unresponsive, just staring at the wall. I went into my daughter's room and locked the door for safety. I called my mom to inform her about the situation. She was already on her way. And I also contacted my mother-in-law to ask her to come over and take care of my wife. I quickly packed a bag for my daughter, and when my mom arrived, we left. My wife didn't even look up or respond to our departure. After dropping off my daughter with my dad, we went to urgent care to attend to my nose. I accidentally got blood all over my mom's new Subaru. Right now, my daughter and I are staying with my parents, and my wife is staying with her parents. I'm considering getting a restraining order against Jesse. My wife and I are separating. I still love her, but I can't live with someone who hurts me and could potentially harm our daughter. While I haven't initiated divorce proceedings yet, I hope my wife will seek the necessary treatment and that we can work things out. My in-laws mentioned that they are exploring the option of inpatient treatment at a local hospital. I've made sure to document everything thoroughly in case there's a custody battle in the future. It breaks my heart because I know this isn't the person I married. It's an illness affecting her mind. However, my priority is to keep both myself and our daughter safe and give my wife the space she needs to recover. I hope this decision is the right one. Edit. I've talked to my parents after reading your comments and came to the conclusion that for my daughter's protection, I need to file a police report. I am headed to the station now. Update. Early Monday morning, my wife passed away. Her friend Jesse had convinced her that I was having an affair, which I wasn't, and this caused her to have a mental breakdown. As a result, I took our infant daughter and stayed with my parents for a while, while my wife stayed with her parents, 
who were planning to take her to the hospital for inpatient treatment on Monday. On Sunday night, my wife came to my parents' house and demanded that I give her our daughter. Because she had previously left our daughter alone for several hours and had been physically aggressive with me, I refused to hand her over. I offered her the opportunity to spend time with our daughter while my parents and I were present, but she insisted on taking her away. Eventually, she left, upset. A few hours later, she drove her parents' car into a tree and passed away. Yesterday, my wife's friend Jessie came to visit me and my daughter. After shedding some tears, she informed me that she planned to speak at my wife's funeral. She had already obtained permission from my in-laws, but she wanted to let me know as a courtesy. I firmly told her that she would not be speaking at the funeral. This led to an argument, and she eventually left after calling me an asshole and reminding me that I wasn't the only person who loved my wife. Later, I spoke to my in-laws, who are insistent that Jessie should be allowed to speak. They have a long history with her, as she and my wife had known each other since childhood, and they feel close to her. Right now, we're all feeling very fragile, and I'm concerned that pushing this issue further might strain my relationship with my in-laws, which is something I want to avoid. However, just the thought of seeing Jessie speak at my wife's funeral makes me feel sick. It's difficult to imagine listening to her, knowing she took pleasure in my wife's declining mental health and left my daughter alone at home. However, I also recognize that I'm not in the best state of mind to make decisions. Grief, guilt, and fear are clouding my thoughts. My parents have different opinions on what to do, and I'm too drained to seek advice from my friends. So, I'm turning to this community again to ask for your guidance. Third story. I walked in on my 18-year-old son having closeness with my sister-in-law, who is my brother's wife and 34 years old. I suspect they have been having a relationship for some time. In February, my 37-year-old brother, his wife, and their two children moved in with us. My husband and I have a big house on a farm, and since everyone is working from home, we thought it would be a good opportunity to stay together as a family and have my nieces spend time on the farm. We have three children of our own, the oldest is 18 and male, and the other two are 16 and 13, both female. On the day my brother arrived, I went grocery shopping with my son while he went to the pharmacy to get his gym supplements. I bought the food, and when we got home, I noticed protection in my son's bag. Two packs with a total of 72 pieces. I assumed he had a girlfriend and wanted to be safe. Everything seemed normal, and everyone got along well. My sister-in-law and son even went on early runs around the farm. Last month something seemed off when they left for their run and didn't make the usual rounds around the farm. They said they decided to hit the road, but I didn't think much of it at the time. My sister-in-law and son had a close bond. Yesterday morning, while returning from a friend's house before sunrise, I noticed the cabin on the farm was open with the light on. Thinking an employee had forgotten to lock up, I went to close the door and turn off the light. However, to my shock, I heard people having closeness inside. When I peeked in, I saw it was my son and sister-in-law. I was so stunned that I didn't confront them at that moment. I haven't shared what I witnessed with anyone, and I'm feeling really unsure about what to do next. Should I confront them about it? Should I tell my brother? Or should I confide in my husband? I'm completely confused and have been doing a lot of thinking. Based on the evidence like the condoms, my son never brought a girlfriend around, their morning runs around the farm, are they really just running? And their close relationship, I strongly suspect they've been having closeness for a while. Update. A lot of comments suggested that I should start by talking to my husband, so that's what I did. He got really upset at first because he thought it was just a joke. After our conversation, we both agreed that it would be best to talk to our son before informing my brother. My son said it started on CIL's birthday party he attended, they got drunk and had closeness in a bathroom, and they have been meeting at hotels ever since and sneaking off at family gatherings. After my son admitted to everything, my husband couldn't handle it and told him to leave the house and go to our condo in town. He didn't want to see our son in front of him at that moment. Once our son was gone, my husband angrily went to my brother's room and told him everything. Sil was not at home at that time. My brother also got very upset, and he quickly packed his belongings, took the kids, and left. He asked where our son had gone, mentioning he wanted to teach him a lesson. We didn't tell him, and he eventually left without knowing. As for CL, 
she didn't return, and I believe my brother might have called her, or our son warned her about the situation. It seems she is scared to come back, as her things are still in the house. Amidst all the yelling and commotion, my daughters overheard everything, and they're heartbroken, fearing that our family might be torn apart. They miss their brother, and worry that my husband may never let him back into the house. My husband strongly despises any form of cheating and has always emphasized to our two eldest children that they should never cheat on anyone or be involved with someone who's already in a relationship. I know I haven't done anything wrong, but I'm unsure how I'll ever face my brother again. He's not responding to calls or texts, and my husband advised me to give him time to heal. Meanwhile, my son has left the condo because he's afraid of what my brother might do to him. He's now hiding at a friend's place, but he won't reveal which friend. We haven't heard anything from SIL. Sil was the one who initiated closeness the first time she and my son slept together. She was also the one booking hotel rooms and treating my son to meals. Furthermore, my son was receiving an allowance from her. Fourth story. My wife and I have been together for 13 years. We began dating when we were around 16, and we've never broken up. Three years ago, we got married. Our relationship was so strong that others were envious, and people always thought we'd get married at a young age. However, over the past year and a half to two years, things started to shift in our relationship. Some problems emerged with her family, and as a result, she started becoming more distant from me, both emotionally and physically. She became very protective of her phone and grew closer to a male co-worker. I admit that I snooped on her phone, because I had a feeling that something was wrong based on various signs. I discovered incriminating texts that confirmed she was having an affair with this guy. When I confronted her in early September, she admitted to it, confessing that the affair had been going on for a year. They were having the affair in our home, even sleeping together in the bedroom that we had planned for our future children. She said sorry, promising it wouldn't happen again, and I told her for us to move forward, she must cut off all contact with the person she cheated on me with. It's been two months, but they still talk occasionally. She argues that it's unfair for me to ask her to stop talking to someone she considers a close friend. Honestly, I'm unsure of what to do now. I'm trying to see if I can forgive and forget, but I don't know if I can ever trust her again. It feels like she's prioritizing her relationship with him over ours by staying in touch. I'm really torn and don't know what my instincts are telling me. She also wants me to keep this situation a secret from our friends, leaving me with no one to talk to about it. I am going to call the lawyer I spoke to a few weeks ago tomorrow and see how he says I should approach the situation. I decided to give you an update because your advice was incredibly helpful. Over a month ago, after posting here and reading all your advice, I contacted my lawyer, confided in my parents and some close friends about the situation, and informed my wife that I wanted a divorce. She pleaded and begged, promising to improve things and end contact with the other person involved. We spent the entire weekend together, and she made all sorts of promises, saying and doing the right things. Though I didn't fully trust her, I decided to give her one last chance to salvage what I believed we had. Things seemed okay for about a month, more like coexisting, but she spent less time on her phone and became more attentive to me. During a weekend, she handed me her phone to show me something, and I became suspicious. I swiped up on her open apps, and I saw that she was talking to the person she cheated with on Instagram. I got really upset, but she tried to convince me that he just messaged her, and she rejected his advances. However, I read their conversation and found out they were planning to meet that night. She had deceived me once again. She promised to block him but insisted on saying goodbye because he was her friend. I told her it was unacceptable and she had to cut off contact and block him immediately. She said she would, but after two days, I asked her again, and she hadn't done it yet. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore, and I decided right then that we should get a divorce. I gave her the option of going through mediation if she agrees to everything I want, or I'll involve my lawyer, and I'll still get what I want. She agreed to mediation, and we're starting that process soon. It took me some time to reach this decision, maybe longer than it should have. But now I respect myself enough to put an end to this and seek the happiness I deserve. She continues to try to make me feel guilty about everything, partly blaming me and telling me how difficult a situation I'm putting her in. However, I remind her that it was her actions that led to this situation, not mine, and she has to face the consequences of what she did. 
I've started sharing the details of what happened with more friends and my family. This isn't how I envisioned my life, but I believe it's a blessing in disguise, and eventually, I'll find someone who genuinely brings me happiness. After I informed my ex-wife, 29F, that we were getting a divorce, she started gaslighting me intensely. She blamed me, saying it was my fault for ending our marriage, and she made me feel guilty for letting our relationship come to this point. She even tried to make me feel bad about taking away the home our dog knows. However, I remained strong, didn't let her manipulation affect me, and proceeded with divorce mediation. The mediation process went smoothly, and she agreed to everything I wanted, resulting in my official freedom, as per the court's notice. During the mediation period, we managed to sell the house within three months, and she moved out a month before the sale closed. While we still lived together during that time, she continued her gaslighting, blaming me for everything and calling me mean for not speaking to her. Her behavior revealed the toxicity and one-sidedness of our relationship. After the house was sold, I moved back to my parents' home for a few months to gather myself and figure out my life. I started attending therapy every week and reflected on the relationship, coming to the realization of how unhealthy it was. I always prioritized her and put my own happiness second, sacrificing for her unrealistic needs and expectations. My therapist suggested that she might have borderline personality disorder, a condition that runs in her family which makes a lot of sense. I worked on underlying issues that led me to be in such a toxic relationship, and now I feel more confident in identifying warning signs. I also committed to improving my physical health, losing 15 pounds in the last three months, and getting back into running, training for a 10K. This month, I moved into my own place in New York City, reconnecting with old friends I had lost touch with. I've also started dating for the first time in my life, though it hasn't been very successful yet. On top of that, I earned a promotion at work, a result of my hard work. Mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially, I'm in a better place than I have been in years. Her affair, which revealed her true colors, turned out to be the best thing she could have done for me. I haven't told all our mutual friends about the affair yet, because I was worried it might affect the mediation, but now that the divorce is final, I'll be informing everyone about who she really is, and what she did. I guess all I wanted to say in this long post, is that things will get better. It's not our fault that we were cheated on, and we should use this experience as a starting point to improve ourselves and become the best versions of ourselves. This will probably be my last significant post here. My healing journey isn't over, but it's entering a new chapter, and I don't want to dwell on what this woman did to me anymore. Don't forget to subscribe, like and click on the little bell icon for notifications of new stories.